Hey everyone, Nico here with Gravity Sketch, and today I want to talk about PCVR, how it relates to Gravity Sketch, and how you can get into it without breaking the bank. Now, PCVR is running virtual reality applications from your computer, as opposed to running it on a standalone headset. When virtual reality started getting going, basically you would need a computer and a headset, and the computer would power the headset. A few years ago, the concept of a standalone headset, which is kind of seen as the holy grail for virtual reality, came about when Oculus released the Quest. The Quest 2 made standalone virtual reality explode. And inside the Quest 2 is an amazing processor called the XR2, which is essentially a beefed up uh, mobile phone processor. While that is awesome, that processor has to be power efficient and it can't get too hot because essentially this thing is strapped to your head. And those limitations limit basically how complex of a model you can make in Gravity Sketch as well as a few other things. So let's break those down really quick. While all of the functions in Gravity Sketch on standalone and PCBR are the same, there are a few things that are a little different. One is shadows. So uh, in the Quest version of Gravity Sketch, you don't have the ability to see things with shadows. That's basically because rendering shadows is really processor intensive, and if we were to enable that, your experience in Gravity Sketch on the Quest would not be all that great. The second thing is reflective surfaces show up a little bit differently. So also similar to shadows, rendering highly reflective surfaces and uh, having those reflections in real time also requires quite a bit of processing power, which if we were to enable that would also create a not ideal experience on the Quest. The last thing is a performance of how complex of a model you can have. The uh, Quest only has can only process so many polygons for per se, and so a super complex model may not run very smoothly or may just simply may not open very well on the Quest 2. With, and that's primarily just because of hardware constraints. And so Gravity Sketch has optimized the application to take advantage of the hardware to the best of our ability. But if you want to go to the next level, you'll essentially need to link your Quest to a computer or use a headset that's tethered, PC VR. So let's talk about that. Basically, in this video, I got the idea for it a few weeks ago when working with a friend on a really complex model, we're building a set of race cars, and he is using a standalone Quest 2, and I was tethered to a computer. And I realized that, you know, it would be great if my friend could get a computer, but right now, you know, like the idea of getting a PC to power uh, just one application, like Gravity Sketch, may seem like a really hefty and expensive investment. It's also known that, you know, if you want to get a decent gaming computer, you're looking at $2,000, maybe $3,000 or more. You can kind of, the sky's the limit on how expensive of a computer you can get. But I really wanted to look at how you could get into BCBR for not a whole lot of money. The computer behind me is a four and a half year old uh, 2018 MSI GE63 Raider. In that computer, there is a NVIDIA GTX 1070 graphics card, which at the time was considered a really good graphics card. So a few weeks ago, I went and plugged in my Quest into that computer, opened up extremely complex model, and it ran just fine. I kind of was blown away by it, quite frankly, and I was wondering, okay, well, if it runs on this, then can it run on a not so expensive, not top of the line uh, gaming computer that are out there? This set in motion several weeks of research and some criteria I came up with to ensure that you can get into PCVR without breaking the bank. The first thing I looked at was the used PC market. Like I mentioned, that computer behind me works really, really well with Gravity Sketch even to this day with complex files. Even though it doesn't have the top of the line graphics card, even though it's four and a half years old, it still works really, really well. You can open very complex files on it and you can get your shadows, you can get your reflections, it works, it just works. So if you don't wanna even cap the, or, or surpass the thousand dollar mark, I'd highly recommend looking at used computers, used laptops or used computers. There's a lot of them out there on the market, they're not that expensive, and you can, you can get into PCBR for a, not a huge investment. Now if you don't wanna get a used computer, I came up with a $2,000 price cap, including the headset, travel bag, taxes, and a laptop. Now that might sound like a lot of money, but many of you already have your $300 Oculus Quest 2, so the price cap goes down to $1,700.
Now, you can get relatively decent gaming computers for $1,700, but I wanted to look at the sub $1,500 range. That way, it frees up a little bit of cash in case you need to pay taxes or you want a travel bag. I only intended on buying one laptop for this video. I ended up getting two. Before we go any further, a few important legal disclaimers. First, I purchased both of these machines with my own money on my own accord without any outside influence or any influence from either of the companies. Secondly, these specifications that I mentioned in this video are based on my own research and my experience with both of these machines running an Oculus Quest 2 tethered with a link cable, and in the case of the HP, an HP Reverb G2. The tech specifications that I also mentioned later on in this video does not mean that these are the only configurations that work. Processors from both AMD and Intel are good and compatible with Gravity Sketch and VR, and graphics cards both from AMD and Nvidia will work well with Gravity Sketch as well. It's just that we have more experience with Nvidia, hence why we recommend them, but there are definitely equivalents from AMD as well. Lastly, and this is quite important, I only tested these computers when running Gravity Sketch in a PC VR format. I did not test or use any other games, so I have no idea how well these computers stand up for AAA games in VR or anything like that. I only know that they will work very, very well with Gravity Sketch VR. And with that said, let's move on and see these computers. The first laptop I ended up getting was the HP Omen 15. Now this laptop I got on sale, normally it goes for about $1,600. I got it on sale for $1,199 and it is a really, really nice machine. Now the thing that set this laptop apart from the others is it has its own dedicated DisplayPort port and a Thunderbolt port which you can run DisplayPort 1.4 through. So you can use this laptop with the Oculus Quest 2 or you can use it with an old Rift S, an HTC Vive, any other uh, virtual reality headset basically you can use with this laptop. So that was a big selling point for me. One of the nicks on it is it doesn't have its own dedicated numpad, so if you're using this with Blender, you'd have to get another numpad for it. But this also had a QHD display, and the specs on it are pretty good. 3060 graphics card, Ryzen 7 5800H, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte hard drive. It's a really nice little machine that gives you tons of options, and quite frankly, I really like the build quality of it. Now that said, when I first pulled this out of the box, it didn't work that well with uh, Windows Mixed Reality with HP Reverb G2. Uh, I had some issues with Gravity Sketch opening some more complex files, and I had the same issues with the Quest as well, and I really didn't understand what was going on. I thought this was a graphics card issue. A couple weeks after struggling with this computer to make VR run smoothly on it, a display driver came out, and after that, everything was quite smooth. That said, prior to that, I was so frustrated with the performance of this, I ended up going out and buying another laptop. And that laptop is the MSI Sword 15.6, which is this one here. Now, this laptop costs the same amount, uh, $1,199 uh, and 1293 out the door with taxes. And it is nowhere near as premium. It's all white plastic, it feels cheap. But right out of the box, this thing ran Gravity Sketch like you wouldn't believe. Super smooth graphics, really, really nice performance. That said, this computer only has a USB-C port, and so you can only use the Oculus Quest 2 when tethered to it. You can't use any other headsets to it because the USB-C port is not even Thunderbolt and won't support DisplayPort out. So your only option for virtual reality with this one is the Oculus Quest 2. That said, if you have an Oculus Quest 2, then this is kind of a match made in heaven. And one of the things I love about this computer actually is how it looks next to the Quest, like it, they match. So I've kind of nicknamed this one my Stormtrooper. Um, I know, corny, but basically like it, it works really well. It's a nice looking setup if you want to go that way. I also like this computer because it has a dedicated numpad. So if you're working in Blender, for example, which you use the numpad, that's a pretty nice uh, feature to have. Um, this one's lighter weight than the HP. Obviously, the HP employs a lot more metal uh, in the overall design. Um, so if traveling and weight is important, that's something else to know. But the performance of this one, I'm just really impressed by. This one, the specs, has a Intel 12th Gen uh, i7. So the 12650H, I believe, is the processor. The NVIDIA 3060 graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte space. Both of these computers will do you well. 
Now, if you have the Quest 2 and you plan on only using a Quest 2 tethered with USB-C, the MSI is a totally solid choice. If you are able to find the HP on sale, like I did, then uh, and you have other headsets, then I highly recommend the HP as well because you have a lot of options. So, a few last notes. Gravity Sketch does not require the best or greatest or latest computer. You can run it on older machines, so if you want to look at used computers, that's a really, really viable option to get into PC VR to see if it's right for you. If you don't want to break the bank, you don't have to spend more than $2,000. You can get one of these mid-level gaming computers and you'll be just fine. You'll, you'll be able to run Gravity Sketch really, really well on it. The computers I use on a daily basis for my job run 11th gen Intel processors and NVIDIA 3070 graphics cards. However, either one of these machines would probably do just fine. Quite frankly, even my four and a half year old uh, MSI would probably do <laughs> enable me to do 90% of my job pretty well. You really don't need to break the bank to get into PC VR. That's a really kind of amazing thing because when I got into it four and a half years ago with that one, well, let's just say that was about $3,200 worth of investment for the laptop and the HTC Vive headset. It was a pretty hefty upfront cost. The fact that you can get into PC VR now for less than $2,000 is pretty incredible. And so definitely take a look and see what's out there in your market and see if you can get something around the $1,200 mark. Again, I'll just leave this with you. If you can find NVIDIA 3060 graphics cards, 12th gen Intel processor, then and 16 gigs of RAM, you'll be pretty well set. And you can find that for less than $1,500. I sincerely hope this video was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. And I wish all of you the best of luck in getting into PC VR when the time is right for you. Have a great day, take care.